the National Pollution Prevention Roundtable and the Green Chemistry Commitment, entitled Transforming Education Through the Green Chemistry Commitment. My name is Kim Richards, and I'm the Administrative Director with the National Pollution Prevention Roundtable. This webinar will provide an overview of a new program titled the Green Chemistry Commitment. The program is a departmental commitment designed for higher education institutions as a voluntary, flexible framework for chemistry departments to adopt green chemistry theory and practice. The commitment is centered on student learning objectives that take into account topics such as green chemistry and toxicology, which have traditionally been absent from chemistry programs. College and university chemistry departments sign onto the commitment, indicating they are that they value the student learning objectives and committing to working towards implementing the student learning objectives within their departments. This presentation will also feature um, a perspective from one of the first centers of the commitment. And now I'd like to introduce our two presenters today. Amy Cannon with Beyond Benign holds the world's first PhD in green chemistry from the University of Massachusetts. Amy worked as an assistant professor of green chemistry and director of outreach and community education at the Center for Green Chemistry at the University of Massachusetts Lowell until September of 2007 when she left to co-found Beyond Benign, a nonprofit dedicated to green chemistry education. Amy was awarded the 2012 EPA New England Environmental Merit Award for her leadership and work on green chemistry education. Our second presenter today is Ed Brush, a professor of chemistry at Bridgewater State University and coordinator of Project Green Lab, a regional center for green chemistry education. The mission of Project Green Lab is to bring the principles of green chemistry into research, curriculum development, and outreach education, and engages student and faculty at CSU and the regional community colleges. I just want to cover a few logistics today before we get started. First of all, all webinar attendees will be on mute during the webinar. If you have questions at any point during the webinar, please submit them through the questions option in your GoToWebinar panel. Also, the webinar today will be recorded, and the recording and slide PDF will be posted on our website, p2.org, by the end of the week. Thanks for your attention, and I'll now hand it over to Amy to begin our presentation. Okay, thanks so much, Kim. Um, thank you to, the, to um, NPPR for um, hosting this webinar. It's a great opportunity, and thank you, Kim, for organizing this for us. So I'm happy to talk to you guys today about this new program, the Green Chemistry Commitment. And um, I'm going to first provide an overview of the commitment, and then I'm going to hand it off to Dr. Ed Brush from Bridgewater, who um, will probably more importantly than hearing from me, give you a, a good perspective from um, one of the first signers of, of this program. So on the first slide, I just wanted to present an overview of Beyond Benign. So at, at Beyond Benign, we're a nonprofit. We're located just north of Boston. We were founded in 2007, we, and we're primarily a green chemistry education organization. It was founded by myself and Dr. John Warner. Um, we were both faculty members at UMass Lowell and left to start two institutions. One is the Warner Babcock Institute for Green Chemistry, which we're co-located with here in Wilmington, and Beyond Benign, which is the nonprofit that I run. And you can see our bigger picture mission and vision. Uh, you know, we have a, a pretty big big vision to really revolutionize the way chemistry is taught so that we can better prepare students to enter the workforce you know, that, are, that can actively engage and design green chemistry alternatives. On the next slide, um, just very briefly, we have two main areas of focus here at Beyond Benign. We have a large K-12 program where we design curriculum and we have a number of lesson plans that are available on our website, beyondbenign.org, free of charge for teachers to download in uh, green chemistry, green math and engineering, and biotechnology. We also provide professional development opportunities for teachers at the K-12 level, too. But uh, the Green Chemistry Commitment is our main college, our higher education program, and that's what I'll be talking to you guys today about. So on the next slide, we have, so the Green Chemistry Commitment, it, this program, um, it really stemmed out, it was inspired by the American Colleges and Universities President's Climate Commitment, which many of you may already be familiar with. It's a really, it was a wonderful model. I, I learned about this from Tony Cortese it's from Second Nature. It's a fantastic model, fantastic program. And what we really liked about that is that it was a non, it was a voluntary approach um, non-regulatory approach to actually bringing a campus and taking a campus and committing to becoming climate neutral over a period of time. 
So we really like that flexible, non-regulatory um, non approach. And we thought, can we create something similar, but with a more of a curricular focus for green chemistry? And so that's really where the inspiration from green chemistry, the green chemistry commitment came from. But it's, it's uh, very different from the president's climate commitment. So what it is is a consortium program. And where our goals, our bigger picture goals, are to expand the community of green chemists, to bring even more green chemists to departments, grow departmental resources, um, help to improve connections to industry and job opportunities. Um, and really, we want to, we're hope, our hope is to really affect systemic and lasting change in chemistry education. And we think that comes through a departmental commitment to implementing green chemistry. On the next slide, so there are many, many people. Um, on the next slide, please, Kim. Thanks. Um, um, there are many, many people that are interested in implementing green chemistry. Oh, oops, should be back on, I think that skipped a few. Yeah, the one before this one. Um, there are many, many people that are implementing green chemistry into their own courses and their, their lectures and their laboratories. And there's lots of different reasons why. And if you're familiar with green chemistry, then you probably understand the reasons why green chemistry people, faculty, are very interested in implementing this. Um, it's highly valued by industry for um, not only you know, the environmental benefits that it adds, but also the economic and the social benefits that, that industry can um, receive from implementing green chemistry. It does have quite a transformative power, green chemistry principles in practice. And students really get excited by green chemistry, um, as, as many of faculty can attest to who are implementing it. Um, our argument is it better prepares students post-graduation. And we hear this quite a bit from industry. There's a wonderful um, education position statement, which I believe I have in the later slide. But I'll refer back to that later. Um, but, but basically, it can help better prepare students to actually, when they enter into industrial careers, to design better alternatives. Because many times, our scientists that enter these positions don't have the proper training to actually invent green chemistry alternatives. Um, an immediate benefit is it can remove hazards from the laboratory and um, you know, have an actual safer place, safer and healthier place to work for students and um, postdoctoral researchers. So and, and green chemistry, it's just the right thing to do. And of course, yes, it's doing chemistry the right the first time. So these are some of the benefits of green chemistry. But on the next slide, um, you know, why the green chemistry commitment? Why are faculty interested, or why are departments interested in, in the green chemistry commitment? Our, what we're trying to build with the commitment is a, a community of practitioners in a, with a built-in support network for these faculty and for these departments. And we also think that there's power to a collective voice. So if there's one institution or one faculty member that's advocating for um, you know, improvements or changes in chemistry curriculum, that's very different from a collective community that's asking for that change. So we think there's quite a bit of power in, in that collective voice. And there's quite a bit that we can do as a collective. Um, we are hoping to share best practices with, within departments and um, you know, learn from each other so that we can help um, promote and advance green chemistry even further. And you're going to hear from Ed today to help you know, to talk about some best practices as well. We think that there's encouragement to move forward. So we found that you know, some of the signing institutions, it was really great timing since they were undergoing some departmental, um, they were putting together a departmental um, plan, a longer term plan. And this was actually really nice timing for them to implement that into their, their plan and actually encourage continual improvement and continual adoption of even more and more green chemistry. It certainly doesn't happen overnight that you just everything becomes green. <laughs> it, it is a process. And um, so, so this is a framework for moving forward. Um, it's developed by green chemistry practitioners. I'll show you our, our list of faculty, our, our steering committee that we've been working with. And um, what we're looking to do is also track the departments and hopefully the community as a whole, or at least a set of the community, 
um, and, and what their progress is towards adopt, adopting some of these key student learning objectives that I'll mention. So on the next slide, I'll show you our faculty steering committee. We've had a great um, set of faculty that we've been working with for a few years on this now to put this together. Um, so you see Dr. Ed Brush, who you'll hear from today, is from Bridgewater State University. He's been practicing in the field of green chemistry education for over a decade, um, ever since I can remember. <laughs> and, um, and so he's been a, a wonderful leader in the field. So we have here on our faculty steering committee, we have faculty from both small and large institutions, some four-year colleges, but also research institutions. So we have a diverse set of faculty, which um, our hope was to you know, have that reflect the signers of the commitment as well. So on the next slide, this is the heart of really what the green chemistry commitment is all about. As a signing institution, as a department, what they're signing and agreeing to is that upon graduation, all chemistry majors should have proficiency in these four essential green chemistry competencies. And this is what our faculty advisory board has agreed upon as the core set of green chemistry student learning objectives. Um, it's theory, the first one, having a working knowledge of the 12th principle of green chemistry. Toxicology is really a tricky one because this is the red flag that goes up because right now there's not a lot of resources under, under this for this to support this um, student learning objective. But there's a lot of places that are figuring this out and some of our work is, is very much dedicated to developing more resources for this area. So that's a jam-packed one. It's having an understanding of the principles and the language of toxicology, but also understanding how how some you know, chemicals actually affect human health and the environment. So understanding that from a mechanistic point of view so that we can use and actually use those, that, that knowledge to actually design safer uh, and greener alternatives. Laboratory skills is ultimately where we want to see green chemistry applied. So we want students to have the ability to assess and design greener alternatives when appropriate. And so um, many, many places actually start with the laboratory and adopting laboratory, you know, um, green chemistry laboratory procedures in their courses. And then the fourth uh, green chemistry competency is really that effective student learning objective where after students graduate um, from these programs, how they actually apply their learnings in a professional capacity as scientists, as chemists, as professionals. You know, not all chemists go on to be chemists, but they will um, hopefully use their knowledge in many different roles, in many different capacities. That one's a little bit harder to measure, and we're gonna, we're probably gonna be, um, you know, figuring out means for capturing that further on down the line, since we're only at the end of the first year of the program, so it's brand new. On the next slide, you can see that so the student learning objectives can be achieved through a number of different ways. And this is where the flexibility comes into play. We really wanted to make sure that what are the things, you know, that, that we, that faculty could agree upon those core student learning objectives, but we wanted to ensure that departments can carry these out and implement them in different ways because each department, each institution is different with different faculty, different resources, um, and, you know, every, every situation is different. And so, um, this is really important to us. That, um, and that's exactly what we find. So we're, again, I said we're, we're at the end of our first year of our program and we're gathering reports from all of the signing institutions. And it's really exciting for us to see, you know, all the different ways that people are implementing green chemistry. So it could come from revising existing departmental curriculum and actually weaving it right into the core of courses, such as say Simmons College has done in their organic chemistry course, they actually run a, a green chemistry research integrated course for their organic chemistry course. Um, and there's a number of places that implement green chemistry into the heart of their organic chemistry courses. So that's really exciting to see. It could be also creating a new departmental curriculum. So there are, you know, places such as UMass Boston that have created where, where I came, where I graduated from has actually created new courses and even new programs in, in green chemistry. So that's exciting. And you'll see such as the University of Toledo is another exciting, great example that actually has a, um, a standalone school in green chemistry and green engineering. 
And so that's also really exciting to see. But again, that doesn't work for every place and in, in every institution. So it's going to look differently at different, at different colleges and universities. Um, another option is to also use other institutional or, or external resources. So taking elective courses in toxicology or some of these other topics that might that students don't traditionally have exposure to, have offering and allowing students to take these elective courses from other departments. I know that's easier said than done in some instances in some departments because there's many departmental challenges within that and again different from place to place. So these are just some options and some, some models and, and for different formats for implementing the learning objectives. On the next slide, um, I'll just talk a little bit about we have, so it's very, <laughs> there's not much of a requirement to become involved. We do have an annual report that's due, and basically what we ask schools is to set their short-term and longer-term goals. And we want to help track those and really track their accomplishments, and track their progress towards those goals into more and more adoption of green chemistry. We have a very flexible reporting format um, with lots of different formats for institutions to report back what they're doing. We have a wonderful advisory board. Um, right now, we have a minimum of nine faculty members. I believe we have 10 right now. And the faculty, that this advisory board really uh, helps to maintain and update the student learning objectives. Um, you know, if there's something that comes along and we need to revisit them, we can. And we will do that collectively through our advisory board. And um, the advisory board also shapes the direction of any special projects that we work on and helps guide the direction of the green chemistry commitment. So on the next slide, um, we are also building our list of partners. And that includes industry and NGO partners. We have some wonderful organizations that have already been promoting the green chemistry commitment. Um, you know, they've been doing wonderful, wonderful <laughs> jobs for us, such as out at Michigan, the Department of um, Ecology out there that have been pushing this into Michigan institutions, so we've been very excited about that. We also have a wonderful list of industry um, industries and companies who have been supporting the green chemistry commitment, and we're working more, and we're trying to develop out some of these other programs to help, again, to help improve those connections to industry to students and to student opportunities and things like that, or sharing some tools and learnings and findings in industry with academia, um, which we think is very valuable. One interesting thing, um, these slides are going to be made available, um, but one of this link here is it, a statement of preferred hiring for students with green chemistry skills. And this came out of the Green Chemistry Commerce Council. We worked closely with them to develop this statement, and they have a set of of companies that have signed this, and it's a really powerful statement. So if you are a faculty member or, and you're looking to convince your department or an administrator that green chemistry is the right thing to do, this might be a really great document for you to, to have in your hand. Um, it's basically they're saying they, pref they would prefer to hire students with green chemistry skills provided all other things being equal, meaning provided they're still excellent chemists. Um, which, of course, we assume that, that you, would, you would have all of those other core chemistry competencies in the, in the um, programs as well. So, um, so this is a list of, of, so again, this is some of our partners and the work that we're doing now. Um, on the next slide, we have a set of resources that we're developing out. We have um, some model courses and curricula that are posted there, although that list right there that's now is mostly of green chemistry laboratory exercises in, that are applicable to general chemistry, organic chemistry, and also some toxicology laboratory exercises that are available. Those are posted as a result of a, a previous workshop that we did last summer at Siena College. Um, I would still m make note, though, which I know we have on, our, on this page, the best place to go for all things green chemistry resources in higher education would be the GEMS database, which is out of the University of Oregon. They've done a fabulous job of putting things in one central location. So we do have one, one set of, of courses and curriculum that are available on here, although we're building this out even more, and we're developing out particularly our toxicology and environmental health sciences curriculum resources. We have some information up there right now, but we're working on a whole set of modular um, 
educational materials that can be accessed by the community to really help people implement some toxicology concepts into their courses in different ways. Um, we're working on a number of different other resources too, and I'm going to skip to the next slide, which I have. Uh, this highlights, again, our, our toxicology for chemist curriculum. This is building off a of work that we've been work collaborating with on Simmons College. We've been running a mechanistic toxicology course, and we're working on taking that course material and turning it into an online modular format so that the community can access it. Um, we're working on a green chemistry education webinar series that we'll be launching this fall. And we want this topic to be, it'll be open to the, the education community, not just green chemistry commitment signers. We want this to go out to the community. But it's really, we want very you know, focused topics of interest that are of interest to the green chemistry education community. So these are things like how some organizations are weaving toxicology into their courses. That's a, again, that's a big topic of interest. It could be um, looking at research integrated courses, such as the Simmons College course that I mentioned. Um, and so, so we're going to have some focused webinar series, and, and we'll, that will be coming out in the fall. So that's one thing that will be available. Um, on the next slide, to be involved with the, the Green Chemistry Commitment to sign on, it's again, it's very easy. Basically, there's a signing form. You have uh, signatures from the department chair and an administrator. And this can be a dean, a provost, a, pre a president, um, or you know, a, a supportive administrator. And then there's a contact form. So who um, who is the primary contact that, that we can contact to reach out to when we have questions about what you're doing. And, um, and then again, I mentioned an annual report. And uh, we're trying to make that as open and easy as possible so that it's a really easy report to do because we know faculty have many, many commitments and we don't want to add to their long list of things that they already have to do. Um, and another requirement is being interested in incorporating green chemistry into your courses and laboratories and telling us about it. We want to hear what you're doing and we want to help promote this and um, share it with the community. So we're very interested in that. We're very interested in really, um, again, we want to help bring green chemistry to the next level in higher education. And we think that's by sharing. Um, you know, and, and so much of this is done currently. Um, we think the commitment is another avenue for that. Um, OK, so the next, the next slide, uh, this is our, our signers as of last week. Um, last week was the first year of the, the, the end of the first year of the program. So we're at 23 signers. Um, and we know a number of institutions that are currently considering it. Uh, again, we have small and large institutions on this list. So we have uh, UC Berkeley, which is a always ranked top three in chemistry programs in the country. Uni University of Minnesota, which is also another top ranked program, as well as Northeastern University here in Boston. So we have some large research institutions. And then we also have four-year colleges. And we even have um, community colleges that are interested and involved. So that's very exciting to us to see the diversity of signers. Um, I believe we have nine or 10 US states represented here um, as my last count. So this list is growing. And um, yeah, we're very excited about that. So on the next slide, I just wanted to share with you some quotes from some of our faculty that we've been working with and that have been signing on. You know, why are our departments interested in the green chemistry commitment? You're going to hear from Ed, which I have a quote from you, Ed. I don't hopefully remember saying this, um, or you can. <laughs> anyway, we have, you know, there's many different reasons and many different ways um, that, you know, that, that many different reasons for, for these departments to get involved. Um, you know, South Dakota State was one that was, was very exciting to us. You know, again, they were looking at really revising their whole departmental plan. And the Green Chemistry Commitment fit wonderfully into that at the time. So that's, that's very exciting. And um, you know, again, to the bigger picture, such as University of Minnesota, making it more generalized and broad. And they do quite a bit of work there with the, at the University of Minnesota and our leaders in green chemistry education. So um, 
with that, I'm going to, I've got one more slide after this with a, with a list of our supporters and our steering committee. We've had a wonderful uh, faculty advisory board steering committee that we've been working with um, and some great support from some key companies and foundations to get us off the ground. Um, and the last slide after that is just our website and then my, my direct email. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the commitment, another great avenue is just not, not only to hear it from me, um, because I'm more of the support behind it, but you know, to talk to an advisory board member, talk to a signer, and, and you know, ask them why they're involved in, in, in their experience. Again, it's a new program. This, is, this has just been launched, so we are still at the early stages, and there's, there's a lot, to, lot to, uh, to be determined. We should have our first annual report of all, from all of our signers available by August this year, so um, we will be sending that out to the community to share what our signers have been doing. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ed Brush to talk to you um, about his perspective from Bridgewater State. Hey, thank you very much, Amy, and uh, welcome. Good to chat with everybody here. Um, my perspective on the green chemistry commitment as a faculty member at, at Bridgewater State University uh, is going to take two parts. I'm going to first tell, tell everyone a little bit about how we use the green chemistry commitment to do a self-assessment of where we stand as a department and institution related to green chemistry. And in doing that self-assessment, how this led to a realization that there were new opportunities that, that we could that we can exp explore. So on the uh, next slide. So this slide shows an, an educator's perspective of what the green chemistry commitment might mean to us. And first off, it's important to emphasize that the commitment was developed by chemistry educators. The faculty advisory board has extensive experience not only in chemistry education, but also in green chemistry education as well as research and outreach. And that the advisory board is representative of colleges and universities from different parts of the United States. Secondly, the Green Chemistry Commitment provides very realistic and very flexible benchmarks. What was very important to us is the fact that we had to do this self-assessment. This gave us an idea of what our progress was. I'll be telling you about that very soon. But again, this opportunity or the ability to see these new opportunities that I'll also be telling you about. The Green Chemistry Commitment recognizes these accomplishments. It is not a certification program. The American Chemical Society is, it takes care of certification of chemistry departments. But that recognition can go to programs that were related to individual faculty, departments, uh, institutions as a whole, as well as student efforts related to green chemistry education. More importantly, or maybe of equal importance, the green chemistry commitment connects faculty to a broader network of green chemistry educators. And the commitment in terms of its relationship to green chemistry education is very important for workforce development as we're preparing future educators, researchers, and government officials um, as we transition to a society or to a chemical enterprise that focuses on greener, greener chemistry approaches. So BSU has applied these benchmarks for our own self-assessment. And our report card on that will be on the next slide. So th this was a very simple assessment. We simply gave letter grades to ourselves um, as related to how we were meeting the learning objectives that Amy talked about in, in, her, in her segment. And starting out with uh, revisions of existing departmental curriculum, I should also say that we, we did this initial our initial assessment about a year and a half ago. So right at the, the time that the Green Chemistry commit, Commitment was unveiled to the, the greater education community. And I'm happy to say that some of our grades went up and that none of them went down. So we did, we've done pretty well so far. Um, in terms of existing departmental curriculum, we focus primarily on the introductory courses first and second year courses for chemistry majors and also non-chemistry majors. Um, 
introductory labs, you know, the major focus, in particular organic chemistry, which is what a lot of folks have been doing. We have one weak point here at, at, at that Amy may have alluded to, the toxicology modules in existing course. We're, we're just starting to get going on these, so we have an incomplete uh, on that. In terms of creating new departmental curriculum, um, again, the we are doing okay here. We could be doing a lot better. Um, we are revising or talking about revising our environmental concentration to include more of a green chemistry focus. Uh, the toxicology and the health sciences is an in progress. We, we are developing a public health program. And we see that through that program is probably going to be our particular window for bringing toxicology into our curriculum. And maybe even, of course, in epigenetics, which also um, would very nicely support some of the green chemistry education that we're doing here. Uh, about a year ago, we developed a weekly departmental seminar series that has been going very well. It is, it is not focused exclusively on green chemistry. That's why we have a B plus grade. But we do very often have environmental speakers on environmental topics and occasionally on green chemistry topics. Um, and just actually going back up to the um, existing departmental curriculum, one point I forgot to mention that I'll talk a little bit more later uh, are research projects. Uh, re undergraduate research is a departmental and an institutional priority here. So we've actually had been very most successful in getting our students engaged in undergraduate research projects. And just jumping down to the bottom here now, uh, utilizing other institutional external resources. So right now, in terms of uh, giving our students the opportunity to learn about toxicology, uh, we do have a toxicology course, actually a very good one, that's taught through our biology department. And we strongly encourage our students to, to take that course either as an elective or even as a substitute for one of the required courses in the chemistry department. So the, this assessment has been very value, quite valuable to us. Um, it was important because it gave us a fix on where we stand in the present. Uh, we got to see how we've done over the past year and a half as related to introducing green chemistry into our curriculum. But even more importantly is that it, it led to discussions on where we want to go in the future. And this will now transition into the second part of what I'm talking about to tell you a little about a little bit about this thing called Project Green Lab at uh, BSU. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. I'm so sorry, I'm working on my computer's full throat. Okay. Right now. You can. Okay, so Project Green Lab is the new opportunity that the green chemistry commitment has led to. What Green Project Green Lab is, is a STEM education outreach center that is focused on green chemistry. The uh, goal of Project Green Lab is that it's going to develop and support a regional community of practice in green chemistry education that is going to focus on the 12 principles of green chemistry as related to curriculum development and outreach education as well as research. And even though it the idea initially started as a regional community of practice. We rely very heavily on our collaboration with the green chemistry educators in the entire New England area. And we're, we're very fortunate to have this very strong core of green chemistry educa educators here in New England. Our objectives are to engage both students and educators at two and four year institutions, as well as high schools. And our relationship with the community colleges we see as being particularly valuable, and I'll say a word about that in just a minute. So we have four points here. First is research. Research is very important, um, not only for the creation of new knowledge, but from an educator standpoint, project-based learning, uh, student engagement. These, are, these have a powerful impact on student learning and the development of critical thinking skills especially where you can apply the metric of the 12 principles of green chemistry to solving real-world problems. We are just starting to offer some professional development. 
uh, again, combining green chemistry curriculum development with pedagogy. We want to make sure that the two of those are always going to be a nice match. Uh, we are, we've also been ver done some very nice things with community outreach education uh, through Green Lab seminars. And our longer term goal, okay, is to inspire K-12 students through developing hands-on activities and summer programs. So before I, I tell you a little bit about what some of our specific programs under Project Green Lab, I do want to go back a moment and just talk about the community colleges, okay, and why we, we want to see this very strong community college connection. So next slide, please, Kim. BSU has had historically a very strong connection with our regional community colleges here in southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, this is re this re is in regard to we have annual annual meetings of the chemists in BSU and the community colleges. We've worked on assessment. We've also worked on the alignment of our learning objectives for our introductory courses. So for us, this is a perfect match. But from a broader sense, the community colleges uh, do a fantastic job in STEM education. Uh, and highlighted in bold on the slide, uh, nearly 50% of U.S. STEM baccalaureate workforce are educated at the community colleges. 40% um, of K-12 teachers have taken at least some of their classes at community colleges. Underrepresented groups are have a strong uh, strong presence in terms of their education at the community colleges. There are strong ed economic impacts to the U.S. economy, as you can see on this slide. And uh, of, of equal importance to us here in the New England area is bringing in the community colleges will greatly expand this uh, New England green chemistry community of practice. And I think this could be this this could be said for many parts of the country where you may have four-year colleges and universities who have formed these natural partnerships with some of the regional community colleges. In Massachusetts alone, there are 17 community colleges. So um, these partnerships could, could be quite valuable in building this community of practice here. So what I'm going to do on the, the next uh, few slides is just very, very briefly go into four areas that Project Green Lab has focused on um, in terms of our initiatives. Um, and what we hope is that these are, well, first off, these are all focused on green chemistry education. And secondly, we hope that these are going to be transportable, that other institutions may be able to adapt and adopt these for their own use. So first off, community outreach education. We initiated a series of Project Green, a Project Green Lab seminars in the spring semester. Uh, these were surprisingly well attended. Um, usually averaging about 25 folks, a uh, large number of BSU students. We also had faculty, staff, and the general public attending. Uh, you see a list of the topics on the slide. We, we did try to keep it light. We didn't want to get into discussions about uh, the, the harm, the unintended consequences of chemicals. But why do we have chemicals in society? Um, and what their role is, and also how green chemistry can be related to solving some of the problems that we perceive with chemicals in our everyday lives. Um, so these, these, these are some of the key topics in green chemistry. Some of them are connected to the research here at BSU. Uh, the format was we had maybe 15 or 20 minutes of a presentation, followed by a discussion period. And these discussion periods typically would go for 60 minutes, and some of them even more, okay, or until the pizza ran out, okay. But uh, we had some very lively and engaging discussions here, and I think this this kind of put a little bit of a of a stamp on what Project Green Lab was all about. Next slide, please. This past May, we as part of part of our. Um, uh, reaching out to educators in the region, we piloted a, a, a green chemistry education workshop. And the goal of this initially was to work with uh, two-year and four-year college educators and giving them ideas of how they can integrate green chemistry into their teaching research and outreach. And uh, Amy Cannon and Beyond Benign were, were part of this uh, as workshop presenters, and as well as many of the other uh, New England educators. 
And it, something like this for us would not be successful without this nice network that we have here. Um, and as we go forward in the future, uh, we want to bring in high school educators. I actually got an email today from one of our local high schools from the the, the science uh, coordinator wants to get green chemistry going in their program. You know, we're really excited about that and uh, we'll be including high school educators in the future. Um, also, one of the things we're doing with our community colleges is as we align the learning outcomes in our courses, we're building directly into those learning outcomes where green chemistry topics will fit in. So they're directly integrated there. And we're expecting that that students who transfer to BSU from the community colleges will have had some introduction to green chemistry principles. So again, I just want to emphasize that these workshops uh, are, do build on the very strong New England green chemistry education community. And we do intend to report on these workshops at the, um, the ACS meeting that's going to be in Boston in August of 2015. Okay, next slide, please, Kim. As I mentioned a little earlier, undergraduate research is very important to us. It, green chemistry is just such a, a nice complement to the type of undergraduate research we're doing. Um, it's the creation of new knowledge that's based on applying green chemistry principles to solving real world problems. A very short list of some of the projects, of the student faculty projects you can see on this slide, also some of our students. And our students who have done research, and in particular research related to green chemistry, have actually done very well. Um, many, we had 10, 10 students graduating this year who have gone on to graduate programs. We have two students who are currently working at the EPA. Uh, another student is actually employed at, um, Warner, at Warner Babcock. And another student, uh, Brandon, who's in one of the, the guys at the top there, he's doing an internship at Warner Babcock. So we do have uh, nice ways of getting our students success, success through their research and going into their careers. And f on the next slide, the, the final project that's just starting out with Project Green Lab that we're also very excited about are these emerging concerns related to uh, what we're calling the social injustice of chemical exposure, this disproportionate exposure of people to hazardous chemicals based on race and social economic status. And the, the wonderful thing about green chemistry is that it has the potential to correct some of these uh, disparities. This is an emerging project here at BSU, and it is multidisciplinary. Besides chemistry, we have faculty from a number of non-science disciplines, student clubs being involved, as well from an institutional standpoint, our Institute for Social Justice. So, as I said, these are programs that I think are transportable at a number of institutions. We will be reporting on these and um, you know, very happy to help out institutions that are looking maybe to start a program like this. So uh, the last slide is just the acknowledgments. I'm pretty much all set here. And Green Chemistry Commitment has provided us with this framework to truly assess what our commitment is to green chemistry education but of greater importance, connecting us with a community of educators that's really empowered us to take the next step in strengthening a green chemistry community of practice. And thank you very much. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, and a special thanks to Ed and Amy for their presentations. Um, we will go ahead and move forward to, for the Q&A session right now. So please continue submitting any questions that you have in the questions tab. Um, I do have um, one question um, for Amy. I know we were able to hear from Ed a little bit. Can you tell us possibly a little bit more about other best practices that you've seen at other colleges and universities? Um, yeah, there's there's a there's a number of them, um, and and obviously not everyone who's doing green chemistry is involved with the green chemistry commitment. So there's also a number that are outside of of the green chemistry commitment as well, but. Some of our, our signing institutions, there's just a number of different approaches. Um, UC Berkeley is starting with their undergraduate intro to chemistry courses, but they're also implementing some um, 
some higher, some, some graduate coursework in green chemistry and um, some other unique green chemistry courses at, the, at a higher level. So that's really interesting, an interesting approach. Um, the uh, South Dakota State is implementing, they, they have um, also been piloting a toxicology course at their institution, so that's another thing that we're, we're looking at pretty closely. Um, I know there's a few places that have certificate programs in green chemistry. Grand Valley State in Michigan is one um, that has that has a, a certificate type program, and um, so there's a number of, of institutions that are also going that route to to almost like a um, a certificate that in some other sort of specialty such as forensics. Um, you know, green chemistry is one that's 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 coming up um, quite a bit. So there's. Um, there's some really there's some really interesting ones, and again, we we're, we'll be preparing a bigger report out of, of all the uh, signers for the commitment. So that'll be really will be some nice summaries that will come out of that too. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and I guess um, this question could um, go to either of you. Um, it's a question about collaboration. Um, is there any way that allows um, for communication between students and faculty at different universities to um, share some of these best practices? Um, I can mention something that's growing, um, and hopefully I'll get the acronym right. There's, there's a group that's growing out of some of the work up in Toronto. University of Toronto has a really great student, student groups um, going on that, that's working, that they're working on to really advance green chemistry from a student perspective. And they're working um, with some folks from the Green Chemistry Institute at the ACS and, and some graduate students and postdocs that have come out of the ACS Summer School on Green Chemistry for graduate students and postdocs. And so it's an organization of um, really young, younger chemists, um, and, and they're really trying to approach it from a student perspective and give students more resources to approach faculty and to bring green chemistry to departments and faculty. So that's really exciting, um, and there's going to be a lot more coming out of that. I don't know if that was a part of the answer of that, or hopefully that answered part of that question. <laughs> Yeah, I would also add that the, the American Chemical Society student affiliates, um, yeah. when they do their assessment of, of student chemistry clubs, uh, some of these clubs actually get green chemistry recognition. So there's another way of getting getting in in contact with, with the students who are doing green chemistry work. Um, and I think the, the, my feeling is the green chemistry community is just very receptive to collaboration in general. And I think it's very easy just to contact, contact pretty much anyone. And uh, I mean, I, I hesitate to give Amy's name as the, the chief contact person or beyond benign. But sometimes that's a, as good a place to start as any. Um, you can also contact me. And if you're in a different part of the country, I can most likely be able to point you to, to someone in your area. Great, thank you. Um, this question is directed towards Ed particularly, but um, maybe Amy could speak to as well. Um, have you, I know this is obviously, it's obviously early in the program still, but are you using this program to advertise to prospective students to possibly bring them to the university for the green chemistry program? Um, not directly, although it's interesting that on occasion I'll get one or two students who will contact me because through some means, they have heard about uh, uh, the fact that we do green chemistry here. Um, I think that's something we, we really should take better advantage of. Um, we, we don't have any, we're not having any trouble getting students uh, here at Bridgewater who want to major in chemistry. Um, and I think that if we do indeed revise our environmental concentration with more of a green chemistry focus, then that, they, that advertising will be absolutely critical. OK, um, and I have one last question at this point. Um, Amy, can you speak to the next steps for the Green Chemistry Commitment or future plans on how you hope to expand the program? 
Yeah, um, one is we're really, we're really focused on what resources we can provide to the community to help really bring them, you know, give them more leverage, give them more resources to their, um, you know, for students, for faculty, for administrators to bring, you know, green chemistry to their departments. So we're looking at different avenues for that. We're looking in, in different means for that. Um, and and we're looking um, to build out resources that are specific for faculty, um, but also specific to students. There's some really great, wonderful resources out there or um, cases out there where one student has really helped to transform a department. Up here in our area, Gordon College, one student really helped convince one faculty member who's now a champion of green chemistry, Irv Levy, up there at Gordon College. And that really stemmed from students pushing it. Um, same thing out at UC Berkeley. Marvie, Marty Mulvihill was was a graduate student at the time, and he really pushed it. And and now you know they've got this multi-departmental um, consortium of a center out there, the Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry. And there's really exciting stuff going on. So we really want to give more resources for um, and and give students. Okay, what are the pathways to bring this to your department and your your administrator? So there's those sort of things. And then there's also the curricular resources, which we think the toxicology one is a big gap that, that currently exists. So that's another big focus of ours, and we, um, we're working on that right now. So. OK, thank you. And actually, I do have a couple more questions. Um, is there evidence that signing this commitment will help um, our students enter the chemical industry? Good question. I, I think that's probably you know hard evidence, hard data. That's no, I don't think that exists yet. Um, but we're working on that. And again, we're we're trying to build those relationships with industry. Who we hear all the time this sort of anecdotal evidence that industry would prefer to hire these students. We now have a, a, that position statement that I mentioned out of the Green Chemistry Commerce Council, where industry is starting to back that up with a position statement. We are also looking for ways for tracking that to, um, you know, and, th and this is really hard to do. This is something we're, tr we're trying to navigate to figure out how to do this sort of thing, is to track that and to see, you know, is industry actually backing up that statement? Are they uh, changing their hiring practices? Are they, you know, hiring more, a greater percentage of students with these skills? And how do you measure that? So it's really, really hard to measure. So, so we're still working that out. Um, so I think there's a lot of anecdotal evidence you actually see a lot more advertising these days for um, for positions specifically that specifically mention green chemistry, which is exciting to us. Um, but the hard data is not there yet, so I would say that. But I think uh, more and more you're hearing industry say this. Okay, did you have anything to add to that? No, I think I think Amy pretty much covered it. Uh, one of the toughest things as, as an educator for us to assess is the the career paths of our students once they graduate. Um, I mean, we we've tried to do a really good job here at, at BSU. We know that a number of our students who have been uh, involved in green chemistry research as undergraduates have gone into uh, into productive careers where they are using their skills. Um, and I think uh, I think that one, once we are able to get a better handle from the the, in, the industry about about how green chemistry skills are going to be relevant and important um, for their company's needs, that not only will that help in in getting more institutions to to embrace green chemistry, but also just make our students more aware of the the employment opportunities that are available. Great, thank you. And on to the last question. Um, do you provide curriculum and actual experiments for the chemistry courses? I guess, Amy, that's probably more directed to you. Yeah, we have a set of, um, of experiments and curriculum that we've posted on the website. And that, that's not, not all of, some of that is, is our lessons that, that we've developed here at Beyond Benign, um, but the majority of them are our partners. So um, they're actually many of the faculty uh, that have developed them. And um, so we have that on our website, although we don't, we, we posted those because those were, 
specifically used in a training that we ran last year. So we wanted to make them easily accessible to the faculty um, to, to access. So that's on our resources page on the Green Chemistry Commitment website. But the best place to go, again, for, for resources is the GEMS database, which stands for Greener Educational Materials Database. And that's out of the University of Oregon, which has um, been one of, you know, they've been a champion and a leader in green chemistry education. So they have a wonderful database that's nice and searchable, too, for topic. And, and um, if you're looking for a replacement for something, you know, that's the first place to go. It's a, it's a great database. So anything that we develop, we would we would cross post there in, into the gems database. So that's that's um, anyway. So yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, well, that is the end of our questions for today. So I do want to send another thank you to Amy and Ed for their presentations today. Um, and again, thanks to everyone else for attending the webinar. And I hope everyone has a nice day. Bye. Thank you.